Over the holiday season, I was gifted a variety of DIY soldering kits by my brother. And there are some really exciting projects here, including a musical keyboard hiding in this box, a flashing LED fidget spinner over here, and a Wi-Fi controlled weather forecasting clock down here. Now these look like really great projects, however many of them are going to be fairly complicated, and if you've seen any of my recent soldering videos, you do know I make the odd mistake. So I thought it'd be worthwhile doing a simpler project to get some practice in before we delve into the more exciting and more complicated ones. To that end, I'm going to start work on this project just here, and inside we'll find a metal detector kit. Now if you look closely you'll see there's only a handful of components in this bag and so hopefully this will be a good project to get started with. So first thing to do is to clean up the rest of these projects, turn the soldering iron on and we can get started. So here is our metal detector kit and as you can see it contains a PCB but no instructions this time so hopefully there'll be enough information on the PCB to assemble it. Let's open the bag and take a look. So as usual we have a nice PCB and what's interesting about this is we have a circular track here and this is actually part of the circuit in that it is the mechanism that the board uses to detect metal in the surrounding area. So that's an interesting way of putting that in the circuit. There's some silk screen on the board which means we can identify which components go where. And I'm going to install those as I'm instructed. If we sort through the components we'll see we have a bunch of resistors a variable resistor, a few transistors, some ceramic and electrolytic capacitors, terminal block, a buzzer, a switch, and an LED. So as usual I'm going to start with the lowest level components and in this case that will be the resistors. So we have a few resistors to install on this board, 470, 200k and 2k. Although we seem to have four resistors available to us, so let's have a look and see what we have here. So this looks to be a 220k, which is a little odd, slightly higher than the 200k specified here, but maybe that's the one for there. This looks to be a 2k resistor, and this looks to be a 4.7k resistor, and a 470 ohm resistor. So we can double check those with a multimeter. So this one looks to be 4.7, and that seems to be correct. This looks to be the 470, and that makes sense. This is the 2K resistor, looking good. And this is a 220K resistor, so I'm gonna to need to adjust the range on this here. And you can see indeed it is 220K. So I'm gonna use these three resistors. I don't think I'm gonna need this one for now, but maybe I've missed something. We'll have a look in a moment. So as usual, I'm going to use some blue tack, which is a store inside the soldering reel here, just to hold my components in place. Okay, so maybe we should put in the ceramic capacitors next. And there are a couple of varieties on this board. There are some 222s and some 104, so make sure we get those the right way round. So these little ones are the 222s, and hopefully you can see that on the video. And these slightly larger ones are the 104. Next we can do these transistors, and there are two of them marked 9012, and there's one that actually is unmarked Q1, but hopefully these are all the same, and if not, well, we know that the one that's different goes in the different slot, but let's double check. 9012, 9012, and 9018. So good to we double check that. Let's just look again. Yep, this one's a 9012, and 9012. 9018, and hopefully that comes across on the video. 
So, so we don't get that mixed up, I'm going to put that one in first. And if we look on the board, you see these two are labelled 9012, so they must go here. And this one on its own, Q1, must be the 9018. And here I'm just following the outline shape of the transistor with the outline shape on the board. Let's do this variable resistor next. Okay, so we have it on LED, and usually I explain that the longer leg is positive and the shorter leg is negative, and there's usually a flat side for the negative as well, although it's usually very hard to see. But another trick you can use is you can use one of these three volt coin cell batteries. So this is a CR2016, which is just a slimline version of a CR2016. Three, two, and we can actually test which way around this LED goes by using the positive on one leg and negative on the other. And you can see that if you get it the wrong way around, it doesn't work. So we now know that the top leg here is the positive because we touched that to the positive contact. And it's also let us see that this is a white LED, which is nice. So top leg, long leg is positive as normal. And we just pop that in here and they Positive here, it's got the square pad marked and it goes in this direction. So, long leg here. We have the electrolytic capacitor. These are always marked, so we have the negative symbol on the left hand side of the capacitor here, or on this particular stripe, and it lines up with one of the legs. And just as with the LED, the shorter leg is negative and the longer leg is positive. And so, this needs to go in here. And again, the positive leg is marked with this square pad here. And in this case, we see some hatch lines for the negative as well on the negative side. So here we have a buzzer, which I'm going to install next. So this is actually an active buzzer, and that means it makes sound on its own. It doesn't need any driving circuitry. But again, you can test this partly because you see the positive symbol here, which shows you this is the positive leg. But again, we can use a coin cell battery to see if this is an active or passive buzzer. If it's a passive buzzer, when I connect the battery to it, it will make maybe a click, but it won't continue to sound. But if it's an active buzzer, it will continue to make a sound. So let's see if that works here. So hopefully you can hear that on camera, it's making a low level sound. If I had the battery around the wrong way, it wouldn't do so. So let's do that. No sound. Obviously on a passive buzzer, which requires driving circuitry, the battery would not do that. So in either direction. So here we can put our positive lead in where it tells us to do so here. And the buzzer is marked with a little positive icon here for the positive lead. And we can pop this in. Okay, next we have a switch. Okay, and we have our terminal connection block. Make sure you put the terminal connections somewhere where you can actually access them. Don't put this around the wrong way. Okay, so hopefully that's all done. I'm gonna need some power leads here. So let me just go and grab some of those. So I've got these two bits of wire now. What I'm gonna do is pop them in the terminals here and make sure we get those the right way around. So it says down here that the device should be run from three to five volts. Hopefully you can see that. And it says the positive is on the left. Okay, so here are my power leads. I've set my power supply to four and a half volts. Let's connect up these leads, see what happens. 
So nothing happening yet, but maybe the power switch is off. So let's try turning this on. And now we're getting a sound all the time. So maybe we need to adjust this here. Let me turn this off for a second. There we go. So we've not got a constant sound now. We take it near the soldering iron, anything there? No, maybe we need to adjust it slightly more. There we go. So nothing from the soldering iron, interestingly. Oh, just about. Definitely something from here. So it's all about tweaking this resistor value here to the precise value. And let's see if it can catch something else. Oh yeah, there we go. So you can see, I don't usually have it on during these videos, but I have a nice watch here, Fiery Watch, also a gift of my brother. Interesting little device. So now we've managed to tweak that. How does this really work? Well, there's just a couple of transistors and it's amplifying the signal it detects from this coil here. And that's causing it to light the LED and to activate the active buzzer. So there you go. Hope you found this project interesting and I look forward to speaking to you again soon in the next video.